So for number 53, um, they want us to find a volume of a tetrahedron with three mutually perpendicular faces and uh, three mutually perpendicular edges with length three, four, and five. So in a generic way, I've drawn these three faces that are mutually um, perpendicular, and that's the face connecting C and A, like this, the face connecting C and B, and then the face connecting A and B. So these are all um, mutually perpendicular, right? Th this would also be um, analogous to our Y, X, and Z axes. And so the way that we're going to set, set this up is we're going to think about... Um, about taking our triangle that connects AB, and then from here, summing it up all the way on the C axis. So um, it would look sort of like this. Let's see. So we're taking the, the triangle that connects, um, that connects B and A. This is 90 degrees. And then we're stacking these triangles up on the on the C axis, right? So when we stack them up vertically, we're going to end up with a volume. So our integral is actually going to be the integral from zero to this value of C. Um, and for this one, I'm just going to put a few because it says three, four, and five. So I'm just going to say that this is five. Um, <clears throat> this here is four, and that is three. So we're going to integrate from 0 all the way to 5, and we're integrating this area of this triangle, right? So, and this area, it's basically base times height divided by 2, so the base is just the length A, the height is just B, so A, B divided by 2, but then we're integrating with respect to C, right? Because we're stacking them up across the C axis, so we're going to integrate DC. Um, so now the problem that we have is... The, our triangle, this area, is described in terms of A and B. However, my variable of integration is C. So what we have to do is we have to find a way to express A in terms of C and express B in terms of C. Um, so the way to express A in terms of C is let's think about let's think about this line here that connects them, right? Because this line is going to tell us the relationship between A and C. So basically, this is a straight line of the form um, y is equal to mx plus b, right? But in this case, instead of um, y being the, the dependent variable and x being the, sorry, y being the uh, dependent and x being the independent, we're going to switch things around. We're going to say that um, c, which is in the sort of y-axis, is equal to um, m a, and instead of using b for the y-intercept, I'm going to use plus k, maybe that's a different letter, right? Where m is the slope, and k would just be the y-intercept, or in this case, the c-intercept. Um, so for this one, our slope is just um, a1 minus a2, sorry, right? Actually, it should be different, because it's y1, so it should be c1 minus c2 over a1 minus a2. So in this case, um, we the c the C1, if we considered that this is 0.1, it's at 0, right? Because if we think about the C axis going up and downwards, this is at 0. So it's going to go 0 minus C2 is 5 over A1. So that's going to be at 4 minus, and at C is at 0, right, on the A axis. So this is going to be a slope of minus 5 over 4. Therefore, we can say that C is equal to minus 5 over 4A, plus the intercept here, and we can see that the intercept on the axis is just 5. So we say plus 5, okay? Um, and so we have our first expression, so let's move things around. So we have that c minus 5 is equal to minus 5 over 4a, and therefore c minus 5 um, <clears throat> times minus 4 over 5, this is equal to a. So now we have an expression for A uh, in terms of C. And now let's find an expression for B in terms of C. Um, and so for B, we're going to have the same idea, but now we're going to have here C is equal to MB plus K, right? Where we're relating how C 
is related to B. We're imagining that B is like the independent and C is dependent, like C depends on B. So once more, we're just doing this idea of the slope, right? In this case, the slope M is equal to the same idea, C1 minus C2 over B1 minus B2. So considering that this point here is our point two and that's our point one, um, C1 at this point is zero, right? So zero minus C2 is gonna be five over um, B1 is going to be three, three minus, and then B2 at this point, well, it's zero, right? Uh, so we're gonna get here that the slope is minus five over three. So once more, um, C is equal to minus five over three times B, and then plus the Y intercept, which is also five. Sorry, the C intercept in this case. And then, um, therefore, let's move things around. So C minus five is equal to um, minus five over three B, and thus C minus five times three fifths, and that should be negative, is equal to B. So we were basically able to express A and B in terms of C, right? So if we're able to do that, now we can, um, we can put these things back into our integral. So this is basically the same as the integral from 0 to 5. I'm going to remove this 1 half outside because that is a constant. And then where we have A, we're just going to have this expression here because we expressed A in terms of C. So we have here C minus 5 times, let's see, times minus four fifths. And then whenever we have B, we're going to use this equation here, which is B in terms of C. And then we're gonna have C minus five. And then in this case, um, times minus, minus three over five and all of this, um, all of this times DC. All right, cool. Now we have all these variables in terms of C. We are, um, we are ready to integrate. Actually, before we do this, um, let's just clean things up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I am going to remove the four fifths and the three fifths outside. So that is four over five times um, three divided by five and then divided by two. So everything when you put outside is equal to six um, over 25 and then integral from zero to five. And then we're left with just C minus five squared. Um, so then that is C squared minus 10c plus 25 and all this times dc. Um, so once that we have cleaned this up, we're ready to integrate. So this is 6 25ths times c cubed over 3 minus c squared divided by 2, so minus 5c squared, and then plus 25c. And all this evaluated from 0 to 5. So then when we plug in the upper boundary, 5, because 0 is going to disappear, we have 6 over 25 um, times 125 over 3 minus 5 times 5 squared is minus 125. And then plus 25 times 5 is 25. Sorry, 125. Um, these two cancel out, right? Let me just clean this up a little bit. Plus 125. These two cancel out. So basically we're going to be left with 6 times 125 divided by 25 divided by 3. 10. And that is what we get um, with the volume for this tetrahedron that has three uh, mutually perpendicular faces whose lengths are 3, 4, and 5. So remember that we just um, took the triangle AB and then we stacked it up across the C axis, right? Sum them up. And then once we got that the area of this triangle was just AB over 2, all we did next was express A in terms of C and express B in terms of C so that we could integrate it um, across the C axis.